Um, okay, so um, I'm a registered polysomnographer, and I have been since the 1900s, way back in 1993 is when I started. Um, I'm also a clinical sleep educator, which I work with patients who are new to CPAP, and of course that's the treatment for obstructive sleep apnea. We're going to go over some of that stuff later in the slides. Um, if you have any questions while we're going along, just interrupt me. It's fine with me. I'd rather you, we can talk about it while we're hot on the subject. Um, this little guy right here is my grandson, <laughs> and he's asleep. He's uh, over four now, but uh, speaking of grandbabies, I had my second one. Well, I didn't, but my oldest son had a granddaughter yesterday. Thank you very much. She is one day old. One day old. All right. So, we're going to cover sleep today. What is it? Why do we even need it? Sleep disorders, some sleep disorders, what causes them, the effect it has on us, sleeping as we age, what happens when we age, the sleep, how does our sleep change when we age, and then um, sleep hygiene, how, what can we do to get better quality sleep? Might be getting quantity, but not quality, that's what we're after. All right. What is sleep? Here is the official definition. I had to look it up. Sleep is the gradual sensory perception shut down by the brain. So senses, smell, hearing, etc. It is mediated by an active brainstem, thalamic, subcortical, and cortical processes. Sleep is an active process. Brain is more active when we're sleeping than when we are awake. All right. What is the bed? Uh oh our bed is a time machine. We get in it tonight and we wake up tomorrow. <laughs> All right, during sleep, our body is under restoration. Growing, regulating hormones, re-energizing for the next day. The brain is reprogramming, fixing itself, filing information, keeping important stuff when our next appointment is, getting rid of the unimportant stuff like what we had for dinner two nights ago, who cares about that? It's like when you restart your computer, that's what we're doing when we're sleeping. How much do we need? A lot of controversy on this with teenagers and so forth. Here's the official chart. Adults, seven to nine hours. Everyone says we need eight, eight's the magic number. Just about seven to nine is where everybody lands. Right? Newborns lead, need a lot. Annabelle, who was born yesterday, needs about 20 hours a day. <laughs> Infants, 13 to 16. Toddlers, 12 to 14, and so forth. Just goes down, down, down until we're adults, 7 to 9. Are you having enough sleep? All right, so body size in relation to sleep. The bigger we are as an animal, um, the less sleep appears that we need. Elephants, three hours. Humans, right around eight. Possums, a lot more, 18. So body size appears to be the major determinant in the amount of sleep that a species need. In, in general, the larger the animal, the less sleep it needs. All right, again, seven to nine hours a day. We just have all of our sleep consolidated into one big fat period. Go to sleep at night, wake up in the morning, we're good for the day. Wait, what about the nap? Some cultures have siestas, right? All right, we're going to talk about that later. All right, we all enter sleep through non-REM sleep, and that's not rapid eye movement sleep, non-rapid eye movement sleep, and that's dream sleep, okay? So we enter through that stage with exceptions, and that's narcolepsy, where some people are the narcoleptics when they fall asleep all of a sudden, like, okay? All right. So that's the organization. Stages. Okay. So, wake. Stage one is a transitional stage from wakefulness to sleep. All right? You might get one to seven minutes, maybe less than one minute, okay? You go from wakefulness to sleep. 
Stage two, about half a night. Stage three, the delta sleep or your deep sleep. That's like when you have a 10 year old in the back seat of a car that falls asleep, you can pick them up and take them into bed. They won't remember a thing. Deep sleep, right? And then REM sleep, rapid eye movement. That's when you're dreaming. So we're dreaming. All right. What role does each stage and state and stage of sleep play? All right, non REM sleep. When we're not dreaming, about 75% of the night, okay? So that's stage two and your deep sleep, delta sleep, all right? When we begin to fall asleep, we enter non-REM, which is composed of one, transitional, two, 50% of the night, and then your delta, all right? Transition, all right, stage one is transition between being awake and falling asleep. Sensory disengagement starts. Can't hear, can't see, can't smell. That's happening. One to seven minutes. Slow moving eye movements, okay? And then there's things called a hypnic jerk. We've all had them, we just, wait, oh. All right, those happen, those stage one, all right? Okay, here is stage one. I'm gonna explain this slide to you because I have several just like this. Okay, so, okay, so this is, um, I'm gonna explain these, this slide to you real quick. This is a slide for a epoch, or 30 seconds of a sleep study, okay? These channels C401, C, I'm sorry, C301, C4 are EEG, brain activity. So we can tell if you're awake, if you're asleep, what stage of sleep you're in, okay? L-E-O-G and R-E-O-G, these are eyes. Chin, EKG, legs, snoring, airflow, chest and abdomen belts, okay? These are what we look at to see how's everything going with your sleep, all right? All right, so these top three channels here is what I want you everybody to look at. Now, you can see this fast moving EEG activity right here, okay? And then you can see it breaking up to bigger waves, okay? So this person fell asleep exactly right there. You can tell this drops, this is here. Right there, it drops out, and they go, sorry, this guy's in stage one, right there. That's exactly when he fell asleep, if you can see that slide, okay? So that's what stage one looks like. Stage two is the onset of sleep, the official onset of sleep. Increasing, increasingly disengagement from surrounding noise, smell, light. Breathing and heart rate are regular. Body temperature is dropping. So sleeping in a cool room will help you fall asleep, help that body fall asleep. Okay, is this fixed? All right. Okay, <clears throat> sorry about that. All right, so you can tell the difference between this slide and this slide. Now we're looking at the top three channels again. Again, he falls asleep right here, starts breaking up, and then we're gonna go to stage two. See how big these are. A lot bigger. These are called sleep spindles. This is a K complex. Okay, so when we see these things, we know this person's asleep. All right. So breathing's pretty regular. You can see he's starting to snore, 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 snore here. Okay. Yep. All right. So we're going to go to stage three, deepest and most restorative sleep. Blood pressure drops a little bit. Breathing gets a little bit slower. Muscles relaxed. Okay. Blood supply and muscle increases, blood supply to muscles increase, tissue growth and repair occur, occurs, and energy is restored. All right, also in deep sleep, hormones release, growth hormones, muscle development, everything happens in that stage. Okay, so we want that, especially when we're young. When we're young, we got a lot of delta sleep. All right, let's see how fat these are. This is stage three. I'm going to back up to two. One, two, and then three. You can see how big those are, those big waves, delta waves. That's how we know that you're in this stage. All right, REM sleep. This is everyone's favorite. 25% of the night. First, first occurs about 90 minutes after falling asleep, okay? We, get, we go into our REM sleep every 90 minutes, but our REM sleep gets longer and longer and longer. The majority of our REM sleep is right before we wake up. And I have a slide on this in, in just a minute here. All right, supports, oh, supports daytime performance. Brain is very active and dreams occur. 
Okay? Eyes dart back and forth. We're looking at our dreams, but we're not acting them out because our body paralyzes itself, so we don't do that. Okay? <clears throat> body becomes immobile and relaxed as muscles are paralyzed. In REM, the brain is very active. The EG is low voltage, looks like stage one. And sawtooth waves, I'm going to show you those here. So this is sawtooth waves. And again, these are the eyes, left EOG and right EOG. And this guy is looking back and forth in, at the dream. Okay. Now, again, I want to reiterate that our body paralyzes itself in REM sleep except for the eyes. Hold on a second. So we don't act out our dreams. Okay, now there is REM behavior where that's turned off in some people, but it's very rare. Yes, she asked me if what if it doesn't turn off, and it and it does not in some people, right? And that's where you hear on the. Do we know why? We don't know why. I'm not a physician, and I wouldn't want to go there. But um, you've heard on the news some guy beating up his wife and acting out the dreams and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's turned off in some people, and then they get analyzed, or you know, they have a sleep study and they find out. Well, yes, he was definitely asleep. Okay, so here's the slide I was wanting to go over. And this is a kind of a busy slide, but stage, <clears throat> stage two, delta, and rim. Now, these are our big stages again. Okay, so just look at the orange right now. These are sleep cycles, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 90 minutes. So this is seven and a half hours of this guy's sleep, okay? All right, so just look at the orange. Stage two is just about the same all night long, just about, okay? Now, the delta sleep, the deep sleep, just look at the red, straight down just like this, okay? Most of our delta sleep, we get right up here in the first one-third of the night, restorative sleep for our bodies, okay? Now, just look at the green, the REM sleep, just like this. We get it all night long. Now, the, the delta sleep is done over here. We don't get any over here most of the time. Um, we get REM sleep in all the stages, but it gets... Higher, higher, higher. We get most of it right here the last one-third of the night. Okay? That's when you wake up out of that stage and say, Oh, I remember that dream. Most of the time you won't remember the dream unless you wake up out of that stage. And REM sleep is what everybody wants. You're feeling good when you wake up from that. That's why you want to go back to sleep in the morning. <laughs> okay. Um, somebody actually told me this once. I don't have a sleeping problem. I can go to sleep any place, anywhere. Well, that's a problem if you can. This is, uh, this is my youngest son and his daughter. I mean his daughter, his, his wife. And uh, this was at Christmas. He fell asleep. There was about 10 of us in the room. And he fell asleep on the couch. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe it was too much eggnog, but... We got a selfie with him. Okay, let's go into disorders for just a second. Okay, restless leg syndrome, periodic limb movements during sleep. Common, I got it, I got it bad. Um, sleep apnea, insomnia, and narcolepsy. So these are kind of the most, the four most common types of disorders. Okay, here's a good picture of restless legs. Uh-oh. Um, these are legs. We have um, EMG, which is muscle electrodes on their leg. Okay. This guy jerks his leg, has an arousal. Jerks his leg, has an arousal. Jerks his leg, has an arousal. This is EEG, so it's waking him up. This is 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. And this is... Two minutes, and he's woken up three times in two minutes because of his leg jerking. So, if you haven't, you know what I'm talking about. And, oh, nearly 50% of people over the age of 65 either have it or get it. What does it mean, and why do they get it? You know, that's a good question. Um, part of it says iron deficiency, you know. Um, I. I'm 53 and I've had it for years. Um, my father has it, my brother has it. Um, 
I'm a, I can barely stand still, drive my wife crazy. But um, I just am an active guy, and I don't know. So you You'll have more than one of these conditions? You betcha. You can have them all. <laughs> you bet, yep. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so there's treatment. Um, you could, uh, I, I treated myself for a long time until I gave up. Um, hot baths work. Moderate exercise is a big one. So if you are very sedate, sit in a chair all day, it makes them worse. If you run a marathon once a week, it makes them worse. So just moderate ex exercise works. Um, ice, I don't know about that one. Massage works and medications. I'm on medications now because it works for me. So if you have them, you think you have them, if you have symptoms of them, contact your primary care. Obstructive sleep apnea. Everyone, know, does anybody know what that is? All right, this is the big one. This is what we test a lot for. Um, loud snoring. Choking, gasping for air, daytime sleepiness, morning headaches, memory, learning problems, cognitive problems, can't remember nothing, <laughs> irritability, frequent urination at night, that's a big one. If you get to go to the bathroom three or four times a night, that's a big, in big indicator. A family member may notice these symptoms before you do. Snoring. All right, here's a good slide of obstructive sleep apnea. So the top channels are EEG again, okay? And this is what I want everybody to kind of look at right here, these channels, okay? This is airflow, air, airflow indicator under this person's nose. And these right here are chest and abdomen belts, okay? And this is SAO2 or oxygen level, okay? So this guy here stops breathing, complete collapse of the airway, his oxygen level drops 4% and arouses. Snores, <laughs> wakes up. Complete collapse of the airway, oxygen level drops, EEG arousal, snorts awake. Over and over and over again, all night long. Destructive sleep apnea. Same guy, same exact guy, two hours later. Treated, treated with positive airway pressure and that's CPAP, CPAP machine. And you can tell he's in REM. Um, you know, when you wake up a lot like that with your EEG, um, you lose out on these stages because you're waking up and waking up and waking up. He's treated with um, CPAP. All right, treatment for CPAP <clears throat> is a continuous positive airway pressure. Um, this little device goes in your nares, okay? Pulls a column of air into your airway. Some people in this, might room, in this room might be on CPAP right now. And it um, causes a back pressure in your airway, in your throat, to keep your airway from collapsing. Okay? It works. Surgery. I've heard it works. Um, I'm not a surgeon. I'm not an ENT. I'm not a dentist. Um, but I do know if your index from your obstructive sleep apnea is low enough, it will work. I don't want to comment anymore on that because I'm not a physician. Um, there are dental guards that uh, advance the jaw that work also. Untreated sleep apnea causes high blood pressure, threefold risk for heart attack, threefold risk for stroke, sixfold for accidents, fall asleep behind the wheel. All right, insomnia. Number one sleep issue with older adults. Disrupted, everybody knows what insomnia is. Disrupted, insufficient, or non-restorative sleep. 49% of adults have occasional uh, sleeping difficulties. 12% have frequent. Number one issue with older adults. Four, form, four forms of insomnia. Difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, waking up too early, poor quality. Very common. Common causes, medications, makes me sleepy, keeps me awake, depression, loss of loved ones, new job, moving, divorce, money problems, 
You can't sleep at all. That's what you look like when you have insomnia. <laughs> all right. How adult sleep changes as we age. Hormones change. Bodies secrete less melatonin growth hormones. Pain, heart disease, high blood pressure, health conditions. Lifestyle changes. Less exercise, less sunlight. Napping, more or less caffeine. Medications is a big one. The goal that we have to take medications causing insomnia or daytime sleepiness. So our sleep patterns get all messed up. All right. Sleeping and aging. And I got this from, I'm going to give you the reference um, in a couple slides here. Studies on long-term health effects of aging and sleep, anxiety and depression. A study found that frequent insufficient sleep was linked to a much higher likelihood of having anxiety, depression, or both. Cardio cardiovascular disease, 495 healthy people were measured to sleep with a wrist device that found those who slept more were less likely to develop significant clarification of calcification of their coronary, ar coronary arteries. Increased inflammatory markers in the body, studies that found that reduced sleep leads to elevated blood markers related to inflammation. Weaker function of the immune system, sleep deprivation has been increased to decrease production of antibodies. One especially interest, interesting study found that people who slept less were almost three times more likely to develop a cold. Increased risk of, risk of obesity, a study of acute Sleep deprivation in young men found that not sleeping enough changed hormones associated with appetite. You're going to eat more. All right. Do you need a sleep test? And I'm not here to say everybody needs a sleep test. That's not why I'm here. Well, I'm here is to say maybe if you got some of this stuff, check it out for your health. Um, so don't be this guy. <laughs> Is your health worth a sleep study? Well, maybe. If you have excessive daytime sleepiness, stress, fatigue, obesity, have you got all this stuff? Probably. Um, if you got any of this stuff, maybe. Depression, irritability, anxiety, mood swings, cognitive impairment, morning headaches, diabetes, I've had all those. Somebody told me this once also. I found it on a Yahoo page. I think I might have a sleep disorder, but I'm afraid that if I do a sleep study, they actually might find something wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Here's me back in 1993. This is how we used to do sleep studies. And this is a screener now. At-home sleep studies are the new thing. Right, right now we're doing about 45% at-home sleep studies. 45%, almost half. Um, most, not a second, I'm not gonna say most, I'm gonna say some insurance require the at-home sleep study now before full-blown full PSG, polysomnography. So um, you come in, we show you how to use it, how to put it on, you wear it, I mean you take it home, you wear it that night, bring it back the next day. So you're sleeping in your own bed. All right, what affects your sleep? Everything, everything. What time you eat, don't eat spicy pizza at 10 o'clock and go to bed at 10, 15. What you eat, same thing. How much exercise you do and do not get. Family, stress, finances, moving, and your circadian rhythms. Teenagers, they want to go to bed at midnight and get up at 10. They don't want to go to bed at 8, so they get up for school at 5.30. Uh-uh. Everyone knows that's not their fault. That's the way they are. That's the way they are. What happens when we don't get enough? I know we've talked about all this before. You get more forgetful. Cognitive abilities. I forgot. Gaining weight, overeating, increased use of caffeine, nicotine, increased risk for getting sick. We kind of just talked about that. Aggressive and inappropriate behaviors. Hmm. I'm not sure what that means. All right. How much do you need? 
Well, again, the magic number is eight. Every human has a certain amount of sleep that they need, be it six hours or nine hours. My wife sleeps nine. Easy. One, the rule of thumb is one hour for sleep for every two hours you're awake. One third of your life. These are myths. During sleep, your brain's at rest. We know it's very active. I can drink three cups of coffee before bed. It does not affect me. You don't know how many times I've heard that. <laughs> I want you to do that. I'll run a sleep study on you, and we'll see. And then we'll do it the next day without you drinking coffee, and I will prove to you it affects your sleep. I only get three hours of sleep per night. No problem for me. You know how many times I've heard that. I want you to go to bed at midnight and get up at 3 for the next week. Come talk to me. Alcohol helps you sleep. It'll help put you to sleep. Caffeine. Caffeine's a big factor. All right, naps. Now, naps is a, it was a controversial thing where no, you shouldn't take them. Anything less than eight hours a night, don't sleep during the daytime, it'll rob from your nighttime. Well, there's a paper in 2011 that, um, from Wheel Cornell Medical College in New York, month-long napping study with 22 healthy men and women, ages 50 to 88. And the findings, studies have shown taking a nap for less than 45 minutes can significantly improve neural behavioral function on a performance assessment battery testing. So a daily 30 minute nap may be safe, may be safe and effective means of improving weight function and reducing daytime sleep with little impact on nighttime sleep. That's a big deal, All right? All right, sleep hygiene. <clears throat> what affects your sleep? Again, everything affects your sleep. Um, I wear earplugs, earplugs at night because any little noise affects my sleep. Well, we got these new neighbors behind us that moved in and they have a dog. Mm -hmm. And b dog barks all night long. So anyway, um, my wife doesn't wear earplugs and this dog would bark, bark, bark all night. So she went outside, she went downstairs and went outside. Shut up. Came back in, you know. Came back upstairs and I'm thinking, what's going on? That dang dog. Went back to sleep. About 15 minutes later, I'm going, she's going, I'm going out there. I said, do you want me to go out there? She goes, no, no, no. So she came back in and, what's going on? The dog's still barking. And she goes, I put that dog in our backyard. Let's see how they like it. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> My wife's very smart. She's smarter than me. She was uh, quality assurance for a submarine squadron a long time ago, so that's why I married her. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, sleep hygiene. Uh oh, let's get some sleep. Go to sleep um, seven, nine hours later and get up the same time every day. Avoid caffeine four to six hours before bedtime. Rule of thumb. Number one sleep aid in America is alcohol. Alcohol put us right to sleep most of the time, depending on how much you drink. But it disrupts our sleep about 46 hours later. Yep. Um, so you go right to sleep and you start waking up and waking up and waking up later in the morning time. It disrupts your sleep, okay? Increases snoring, it ex exacerbates obstructive sleep apnea by relaxing muscles. So you have more sleep apnea, right? Less muscle tone. Designate worry time. This is a big one. Life stress. Me, I got meetings all the time. I got to prepare for, I prepare meetings for my physicians at work. I got to worry about what they're going to think. So best thing to do is give you, recommend worry time. Get a pad of paper about 4.30, write all your worries down, then close it up, put them in the drawer till tomorrow. Don't worry about it during sleep. Sounds really easy, doesn't it? <laughs> Exercise, uh-oh. Exercise daily. That's a big one. Another big one.
People who exercise have fewer episodes of sleepiness. Studies shown that exercise helps our bodies transition between stages more smoothly. Walk your dogs. All right, eat right. Don't go to bed hungry. Don't eat a big meal right before bedtime. Laptops, that blue light, you've heard that before. Blue light in the television and laptops. No watching TV in bed. Um, use the best room, bedroom for sleeping and only sleep in the bedroom. Sounds easy. Get a good mattress and I put this on there. This is my rule. Everyone will go out and spend $30,000 on a new truck, new car, and they'll go to the mattress outlet and buy the cheapest one they can find. But they're in that bed eight hours a night. They're in that car 10 minutes a day. Buy a, bit, buy a good mattress. Okay, start a nighttime ritual. One hour before bed, stop working. Turn down the volume, dim the, turn the volume on, turn down the volume on the television, dim the lights. Start that pre-bedroom ritual every night at the same time. Kind of key indicators that you're getting ready, that your body's ready to go to sleep. Sunshine. Get some bright light will move your clock. What I mean by that is you get morning sunshine, okay? Go to bed early, get that late afternoon sunshine is going to keep you up. 40 minutes a day. These are my references where I got my stuff from. And I am 53 years old and I have been asleep for 17.6 years. <laughs> One third of my life. And there's Mason again. He's wide awake now. <laughs> Questions? Thanks for having me.